Welcome YouTubers and subscribers. I would like to present to you a series of videos that I hope will help describe the wave theory of Walter Russell. Running in parallel with these series of videos, I have a website and I will leave the link to that website in the show notes below. In today's video, I would like to cover the subject of the projector, which is the wave field itself. This is quite an, an elusive uh, topic because it's, it's, it's an area within Walter's work that he puts a lot of description into, but because it's something we can't sense, uh, it is quite difficult to grasp. However, it is essential that we have a full understanding of what the wave field is and what it's capable of doing before we can get a full appreciation of how the wave itself is reproduced within that wave field. As you can see from the slide on the screen, there are quite a number of subjects that need to be covered in order to give us all of the components required in order to present an accurate representation of Walter's interpretation of this elusive, illusionary universe. In this presentation, I will be focusing solely on the projector, that is, the cubic wave field. We will be looking at the properties of that wave field, what it has to be able to do in order to be able to project an image into this illusionary universe of form and solidity. As these series of videos progress, we will be looking at the other areas also. For example, the light source, where the image is actually projected, onto what screen is it projected, what kind of a negative is being used, how are lenses used to focus that light onto the screen, what is the driving force behind the projection system, and when the projection system is actually up and running, what kind of a movie does it project? How do we interpret that in terms of the wave? And of course, most importantly, how is the projectionist involved in all of this? How does cosmic mind control this from without and from within? I'm sure you're familiar with this drawing that Walter did to describe how a wave um, propagates. In this video, we will just be focusing on the first two parts of it. It's broken up into six parts there, but we will be focusing just on the first two at the top of the page, where the impact occurs and how that impact is harmonically reproduced across the surface of the water. When the surface of the water is completely calm, there is no movement in the surface whatsoever. You can't isolate one part of the surface from another part because there's no distinguishing features between it. It is all perfectly calm. The impact of the stone, however, at point D introduces a, a disturbance. And that disturbance is harmonically reflected along all of the points E. We're going to take a closer look now at those harmonic points, how they are created within the wave field, and what effect that has in reproducing the impact throughout every wave field. In the home study course, Walter asks us to consider the following thought experiment. He asks us to consider building a six-sided cube, the internal walls of which are all mirrored. When a light source is lit at the centre of that cube, there is a reproduction of that light continued to a, to a perceived reality in all of the six directions. The, the light is bounced forwards and backwards between the opposite mirrors and we get this kind of reflected harmonic effect as if the light is extending out in all six directions to infinity. This graphic is attempting to show where the harmonic points manifest as a result of the light being shone from the centre point of the cube. Each of those harmonic points becomes the centre of its own cube. Each of those cubes, also being mirrored internally, continues the process of projection and reflection. And so what happens is there is a, an illusion of dimension either increasing or expanding 
based on the perceived projection of light through wave fields bouncing backwards and forwards between internal reflective mirrors. So the universe has a cubic structure. From the overall master cube holding the entire creation idea being subdivided and subdivided into smaller and smaller cubes, each of which has the ability of the master cube to reproduce that idea. So the centre light that existed as a seed in the master cube is reproduced in every single wave field and every single wave field is capable of reproducing that of the master cube. The wave, the universe has a holographic aspect to it in that every single wave field, no matter how small, has the ability to reproduce every aspect of creation exactly as the master cube can do. This implies that every cube in the universe is the same cube. It has the same capability of reproducing from the same seed the entire expression of creation. This light floods the entire wave field. This light is the white light of cosmic mind thinking. It is beyond our senses. The light is so pure. It is pure mind. When an expression of creation is beyond our senses, we sense it as black. There is some confusion in Walter's work because he does interchange between referring to the, to the light of cosmic mind thinking as being pure white and also as being black. Inside the overall master cubed of an undivided universe, there is nothing for us to sense and therefore we perceive everything as black. There are no internal planes in the cube at this moment. Internal planes are only applicable once division has occurred. At the moment we are talking about a completely homogeneous undivided universe. The seed has not yet germinated to fulfill any expression of the idea of creation. The unsensed universe is cosmic mind knowing. This is the only true reality. It is the place of stillness. We are unable to interact with the, re the true reality. We can, however, know of its existence. This black slide attempts to represent the stillness, the undivided nature of cosmic mind knowing. The only true reality. Once Cosmic Mind decides to express what he knows, a division in that stillness occurs. That's why the, the Master Cube materialises. It, it, is, it is within this Master Cube that the whole of creation will manifest. The White Cube, surrounded by blackness, is a representation of the overall life and death principle. Life is expressed within the cube, and the death principle is expressed in the blackness of st and stillness of cosmic mind knowing. Cosmic mind thinking exists within the cube and cosmic mind knowing exists without the cube. This expression of cosmic mind thinking at the center of this cube could be in any cube. The axiom of as above, so below applies. It is only in the master cube that the original seed resides, but a reproduced seed exists in every other cubic wave field throughout the whole universe. So this cube could be could represent the cube at the very, very centre of all of creation, or it could easily represent the master cube within which all creation exists. There are an infinite number of cubes distributed throughout the whole universe. It has a cubic wave field structure. And within each individual wave field, that portion 
of dimensioned illusion real illusionary reality is created. So this seed at the center of the cube represents the seed of all creation. It contains within it every possibility, every expression of possible creation. Within the acorn, there is no evidence of any part of the oak tree within the seed of the acorn. There is no evidence of leaf, bark, root, trunk, nothing. So it is with the seed of all creation. However, within that seed is all possibility. And that possibility exists in every single wave field from big to small, as above, so below. So just to recap, if we take a cube, it can be a cube right down at the quantum level, or it can be the master cube, which contains the whole of possibility within creation. That centering seed ha is, as because of a process of projection and reflection, multiplied itself in into neighboring wave fields, creating harmonic points that accurately reproduce the seed. And those harmonic points become the centers of their own cubic wave fields. And the, the a reproduction of the internal reflections goes on inside every single one of those harmonic wave fields. And the process continues right down to the quantum level and back up again to the master cube level. Because all of creation is contained within the master cube and it is subdivided into many, many subcubes, each of which is capable of reproducing any part of the total idea of creation. So each wave field acts as a projector and as a receiver within its own right. This is how any idea of creation is expressed and transmitted throughout the entire universe so that any action reaction that occurs in one wave field is felt and reflected in every wave field because everything is connected to everything else. Everything is in fact one. It has one source and will return to one source. If you click on the link below it, it will take you to the website that's running in parallel with this presentation. I hope that a combination of the written material on the website combined with this presentation will help to give you a good grounding in understanding the wave field, how it functions as a projector and why it needs to do what it does in order to create the total illusion of this perceived universe of solidity when in fact no solidity exists at all. So it's important to understand how the projector works, but at the moment we've only dealt with an undivided light source. Once light is divided within the wave field, the complexity within the wave field goes exponential. I will continue this presentation in part two when we will discuss the introduction of those three vertical planes which divide white light into the entire spectrum, known spectrum. That increases the complexity within each wave field enormously.